welcome to key skill 123456, the last one. So I'm sure you guys really want to finish. I want to finish, so let's go. Find the range of values of k for which this equation, k, kx squared plus 2kx plus 1, has no real roots. So just like the previous videos, if you didn't watch them, you must watch them. So go back and watch them, otherwise this is not going to make so much sense. A is the coefficient of x squared, B is the coefficient of x, which is 2k, and C is the number that is not connected to an x or x squared, in this case 1. You're always going to use the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. However, depending on if it says no real roots, real roots, the sign is going to be the same. So for no real roots, we're going to want less than 0. For real roots, for example, two real roots, bigger than zero, and the last key skill we had one real root equal to zero. So there is a cheat sheet, a table in the ebook, so check that out. B squared is 2k squared minus 4 times a is k times c is 1 less than zero. So 2k squared is 4k squared, because you've got to square both the 2 and the k. 4 times k is 4k, times 1, 4k, so minus 4k less than 0. Remember, to graph it, we pretend that it was equal to 0, and we get the two roots. So I'm going to factor out, you take out the highest common factor, 4k. That gives me two solutions, 4k equals to 0, or k equals to 0, 0 divided by 4, and k minus 1 equals to 0, which is k equals to, this would come over here and become 0 plus 1, or k equals to 1. Get a quick diagram going. This diagram doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, it's really just a rough sketch for you. I'm going to mark in k is 0 and k is 1. Let's put that there. So that's 1 and that's 0. This is a positive. This is not a minus 4k squared. It's a positive uh, quadratic, so it's going to be a smiley face. Now. It is less than zero, the sign, so you want to shade underneath. So less than zero, shade underneath this line here. It's going to be K. So I've shaded one area here, and I get one inequality. I put zero and one on either side, and I shade it like that one compound inequality and that question is finished. Okay, question two. Find the range of values of k for which this equation kx squared plus k plus 1x plus k has unreal roots. Slightly different terminology but meaning exactly the same thing. So start by writing down my A, B, C. Then for unreal roots, I'm going to write B squared minus 4 AC less than 0. Substitute in there. Less than 0. Let's multiply this baby out. Now, minus 4 times k times k, minus 4, oi, k squared less than 0. k squared plus k plus k, and 1 times 1 is 1, minus 
four k squared less than zero. Okay, k squared minus four k squared is minus three k squared plus two k plus one less than zero. I absolutely hate this when you have a minus on your x squared or k squared in this case. So I'm going to bring everything over to this side. I'm going to pick this whole thing up here and bring it over to the other side, changing the signs. So Some people leave it like that and factorize it and I find it kind of gross. So the zero, I'm going to, everything's going over here. And now there's nothing left over here or zero. Let me put it like that. But don't forget, because I moved it across the inequality, just like the equal sign, I need to change the signs. So that minus has gone to a plus. The plus has gone to a minus, and the plus has gone to a minus. I need to factorize it. So 3 times minus 1 is minus 3, and I need minus 2. So I need two numbers that multiply for minus 3 and add up for minus 2. So I'm going to have minus 3 times plus 1. Minus 3 times plus 1 is minus 3. Minus 3 added with 1, that will be minus 2. So I'm good here. Let's move that little guy out of the way. So we're going to break down... We're going to break down the minus 2k here into minus 3k and plus 1k. God, that yellow is a bit too much. Okay, so then you're going to factorize the first two. And I'm going to take out 3k going to leave me k minus 1. 3k times k is 3k squared. There's the minus. 3k times 1, 3k. Okay, here I don't need to take out anything. I'm just going to put a 1 outside. k minus 1. You always want these guys to match. So my two brackets are going to be 3k plus 1, this one and this one. And the second will be k minus 1. Oof, this question is long. Okay, roots. 3k plus 1 equals 0. 3k, that plus 1 needs to go to the other side and it will become minus 1. That will be minus 1. And we'll have k equals 2 minus a third. That's going to go on our graph. Other one, a little bit easier. k minus 1 equals to 0. k equals to 1. So, let's get a little graph going. This course does assume that you already know how to factorize. So if you're really struggling with the factorizing, putting the brackets in, you're definitely going to need to take a step back and look at that. I'm going to make three, so one, two, three, one. Because then I can put, oh, minus a third will be, each one will be a third, a third, two thirds, one. So minus a third will be like this. Now, I graphed this one, which you can see here, it's a positive, so I'm looking for a smiley face. And I had it bigger than zero. So remember, I want to shade above, above this, above this x-axis. So that will be in two places, here and here. If I shade two places, I get two answers. K is less than or going to the left for minus a third. 
and k is bigger than 1. So if you shade in two places, you get two answers. And that's that question finished. Okay, very, very last one in the whole course. So stay with me here. A is p squared. Oh no, let me read the question. Let's go back and read the question. If my students don't read the question, I always tell them off. Show that the equation p squared x plus pqx plus q squared cannot have real roots if p and q are positive. So this is a little bit of a tricky one. It's going to start the same though. We're going to write down our a, p squared. We're going to write down our b, p, q. And we're going to write down our c, q squared. Cannot have real roots. So this will be real roots, but they cannot have real roots. So we have to show that it's, if they cannot have real roots, it has to be less than zero. So let's substitute everything in. B squared is PQ squared minus four times A, four times A is P squared times C, which is Q squared. So we want to show that's true in the end. So this will be P Q squared. That squared will go on both of them. Minus four P squared Q squared. So this is the same as 1p squared, oh, I've gone a squared. p squared q squared minus 4p squared, p, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> minus 4p squared q squared. So that'll be minus 3p squared q squared. Or, now, p squared has to be positive. We talked about that before. So p squared is bigger than or equal to 0. And so is q squared. So both of these two are positive numbers. They probably, and when I say they, I mean me, probably should write in the question P not, P, Q not equal to zero. So these two are positive numbers. So a positive number times by a positive number will be a positive number. What we've got is a negative number times by a positive number times by a positive number. So a positive times a positive has to be positive. So for example, plus three times plus two has to be another positive number. But a negative times a positive is always a negative. So in this situation, ours has to be negative. Minus times plus times plus. So that means if I go backwards up the chain, that b squared minus 4ac was less than zero because it was a negative number. Negative numbers are less than zero. If I've got this true, let's get rid of that really obnoxious yellow. If I've got this true, then I have to have no real roots, or sometimes they call it imaginary roots. If you do further maths, you get a little bit more into that. But, Congratulations, we have finished. We've made it the whole way through A-level quadratics, everything you need to know. Congratulations, you've got the last set of questions down below or up above, or I don't know where it's gonna be on your screen. Complete the questions, the exam questions in your ebook and you should be ready to go on this topic. I don't know which uh, series we're gonna make next. Maybe you can send me a message or comment down below with what you would like to see in the next series. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, review, all of that good stuff. And from the team and I, thank you for watching. Bye for now. The team at Math with Sophie have made a free ebook to go with this video series. 
We've broken the topic down into small, manageable sections. Each section has a video tutorial that you're already watching, interactive questions, and model solutions from exam questions. To claim your free ebook, you don't need to download anything, you don't need to sign up for anything. You simply click the link below and it will open in the web browser of your phone, tablet, or computer. If you enjoy using our free ebooks, make sure you check out our website because we have other ebooks on different topics.